All right, let's look at an example now of superposition. And in this case, I've got a circuit that has a dependent source in it. So let's work this using superposition. I want to find the voltage Vx using superposition in this course, or in this case. And note that Vx is the voltage between that node and that node. So it's actually the voltage across two elements, not just one. So we're going to go through and we're going to apply what we know about nodal analysis and use that to solve this with superposition. So in this case, I've got two independent sources, which means I need two partial circuits. So let's go through and solve this. Let's first keep the 70, sor the 70 volt source active and let's deactivate the 50 volt source. So we first have a partial circuit with the 70 volt source. The 50 volt source is a voltage source. It becomes a wire. And now all of my other voltages and currents, I'm going to, once again, use a little prime stroke. This IB becomes IB prime. I've got a current controlled voltage source to IB prime. And the voltage between these two nodes becomes VX prime. So now let's go through and let's solve this. And I'll put my ground down here because that enables me to set that voltage, that node voltage to 70 volts. And now I can go through and I can solve this nodally. In this case, I'll pick a current going in this direction and a current going in this direction and a current going in this direction through those three for those three resistors. I've already got IB going in that direction through the 4 ohm resistor. There's no point in specifying a different current. Let's just go with what we already have. So in this case, once again, passive sign convention determines the polarity of the voltage across it. I've got VX prime here, and therefore I know that voltage is going to be VX prime. So I'm just going to go ahead and label that node as VX prime. This node I'll call V1. And so these are my two unknown node voltages. And we note that this is really, it's a super node. So we could actually use the super node technique, but I'm not going to bother to do that. I'm just going to work this using the standard nodal analysis techniques. So if I'm going to write the KCL equations, we note since I've got two undefined nodes, I'm going to need to, if I'm going to write the KCL equations at these nodes, I'm going to have to have a source, a source variable for that voltage source, a current source variable, or rather a current variable, I'm sorry. So I'm going to call that IS prime. So the dependent source, the dependent voltage source has an unknown current source variable. I can now go and write the KCL equations I'm going to need. So in this case, for my V1 node, I have 70 minus V1 over 20 is equal to V1 over 2 plus IS prime. For my VX node, I've got 70 minus VX prime over 4 plus IS prime must be equal to VX prime over 10. So those are my two KCL equations and of course I needed that current variable in order to correctly write those two equations. And if I'd forgotten it, then I would be in trouble. Well, what else do I need? Well, I don't have enough equations 
I've got V1 IS prime and VX prime. I'm missing an equation. What am I missing? Well, let's see. What do I have here? Obviously, I need a constraint. The constraint is, is that VX prime minus V1 must be equal to 2IB. The problem is, is when I added that constraint, I also have to deal with that dependent current source variable. So my dependent source variable, what is IB? IB prime must be equal to 70 minus VX prime divided by 4. So that's a, that's a pretty good problem. This illustrates all the different techniques in nodal analysis. Write the KCL look for constraints, look for dependent source variables. It's got all of them. So now I've got four equations and four unknowns. I can solve and what I'm going to get in this case is that V1 will be equal to 16.383 volts. IB prime is equal to 8.936 amps and VX prime is equal to 34.22, pardon me, 255 volts. So here is my VX prime due to the 70 volt source. All right, now let's go through and let's solve the other partial circuit. Now let's solve a circuit with the 50 volt source active. I'll put that back. I will zero out the 70 volt source. That becomes a wire. And now ground goes all the way around the side. So obviously that's a zero volts now. And in this case, I'm going to call this voltage V2 to distinguish it from the V1 of the other partial circuit. And in this case, I'm going to call this IB double prime. IB double prime and IS double prime. And in this case here for VX, this is now VX double prime and VX double prime. Okay. Now this is a situation where I have a non-essential node that I'm going to have to write a KCL equation for. And why is that? Because I need to write the, the, the I need to write the constraint equation for that 50 volt source in order to solve the circuit. But I can't do that unless I have a node voltage variable on either side. So in this case, I'm going to include a V3 node down here. And this is here so I can write the constraint equation. If I did not include that, you would not be able to solve it. And so there are times when you have to deal with non-essential nodes and this is the case when there is a voltage source in series with a resistor. Okay, let's go through and let's solve this now. All right. So in this case, I'm going to do something a little different just to prove this. I'm going to flip this current around for no good reason other than the fact I just want to do it because there's no reason why the currents have to be the same. So I'm just going to flip it this way. when I write the KCL equations. So in this case, what I'm going to have is, first of all, I've got my V2, my V2 KCL equation, V2 over 20, plus V2 over 2, 
plus is double prime is equal to zero. Then I've got my vx double prime node. In this case, I've got that zero minus vx double prime over four. plus is double prime is equal to what? What did I forget? If I'm going to write that KCL equation, I have that current variable for that voltage source. What about that one? I need that current variable. I'm going to call this is2 double prime. I can't write the KCL equation unless I include the current through that voltage source. So this will be equal to IS2 double prime. It's very easy to forget currents through voltage sources when you're writing KCL equations. Watch out for that. Okay? Now I can write another KCL equation for the V3 node. Even though it's not essential, it's going to be necessary. IS2 double prime going in is equal to V3 over 10. What are my constraints? My constraints are that VX prime minus V2, or pardon me, VX double prime minus V2. is equal to 2IB double prime. Also, V3 minus VX double prime is equal to 50 volts. So that's why I needed that V3 so I could write the constraint equation. Otherwise, I can't get a solution. And I still need a dependent source variable. So my dependent source variable is, in this case, IB double prime is equal to zero minus VX double prime divided by four. I've now got five equations and five unknowns. I can now solve, pardon me, uh, six, pardon me, six equations, six unknowns. I'm sorry, two constraint equations. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can now solve, and if I solve these, what I'm gonna get is that in this case IS double prime is equal to 3.511 amps V2 is equal to minus 6.383 volts IS2 double prime is equal to 4.57477 amps V3 is equal to 45.745 volts. Vx double prime is minus 4.255 volts. And Ib double prime is equal to 1.064 amps. So here's all of my elements put together. And in this case, this is the voltage due to the mine due to the 50 pardon me due to the 50 volt source so that's my other partial current or partial voltage i'm sorry so what's vx vx is just equal to vx prime plus vx double prime and that will be equal to 30 volts and that is my answer Now, incidentally, I want to point out, just for completeness, that I could have actually grouped together both of these voltage sources into a supernode. And I could have written one KCL equation for those three nodes combined together. And what would have happened is, is it would have combined those three nodal equations and removed by substitution and given me a single supernode equation. So I could have done that if I wanted to. But in this case, I just stuck with the straightforward technique and just defined those current variables. 
But if you did want to do the super node, just for completeness, what you get is this. For the super node, you'd have that 0 minus vx double prime over 4 would be equal to v2 over 20 plus v2 over 2 plus v3 over 10. So that would be my super node equation. In other words, this current going in is equal to this current plus that current plus that current all going out of the super node. And this, of course, is nothing more than the linear combination of those three original KCL equations. And I've just simply eliminated the IS double prime and the IS2 double prime by substitution. Okay? So, here's my answer. But I want to emphasize a couple of points. If I had given you the original circuit, If I give you that original circuit and I'd said, find Vx, you would not need to use superposition. If I just said, find Vx, you can just solve this circuit using nodal or na analysis or mesh analysis. There's absolutely no reason for you to use superposition. The value in this is I'm able to find out what the contribution of Vx is due to those two independent sources, how much they each contribute to the value of Vx. That's the value of it. But normally, if you're given a problem like this and you're just asked to calculate a quantity, don't use superposition. Not unless you need to know the partial contributions of each source. The other thing, as you guys saw, the dependent source was in both partial circuits. I do not zero it out. In fact, I maintained the variable and went through and solved in, all the, in both partial circuits. So the dependent source is just like a resistor. It is in every partial circuit. You don't mess with it. Okay? So here I had two sources, two partial circuits. If I had three sources, I would need three partial circuits and so forth. If I had four sources, I'd need four partial circuits. So in each case, I would zero out all of the independent sources but one, and then solve each partial circuit due to a single source driving that circuit. All right, so that's superposition. We'll see some more applications of this later on. All right? Okay, so Let's next time we're going to look at some more advanced circuit analysis techniques. And we once again we'll expand it upon some tricks and techniques that are consequences of us applying the principles of linearity.